alma yapmayacağım. Ancak parlament ve ayak bastığımız günden bugüne de savunduğumuz hep kardeşlik, demokrasi ve barıştır. Akan kardeş kanının durdurulmasıydı. Eğer tüm bunlar suçsa, evet bu suçu işledik. Bundan sonra da işlemeye devam edeceğiz. I have always said, even if they shut me up in a fortress or chained my body, they could not shackle my spirit. With my last breath, I would continue to speak out and declare my message of peace, brotherhood and democracy. The Kurds are the largest ethnic group in the world without a nation. They have been divided between four countries, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey. There are over 30 million Kurds, half of which live in Turkey. The Kurds of these lands share a long history of failed deals and broken promises. The governments of these countries have done everything in their power to limit or eradicate the Kurdish identity. In Turkey, any political party that has attempted to deal with the Kurdish problem in a non-violent and democratic way has been labeled a separatist, brought to trial and shut down. This is really a problem for the democracy of Turkey and uh, I hope that the High Court of Turkey uh, sees that uh, this behavior might be an obstacle for Turkey to join the European Union. This Turkish policy has radicalized certain factions of the Kurdish population, creating a fertile source of recruits for a guerrilla group called the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers' Party. The war between the PKK and the Turkish military has claimed the lives of more than 37,000 people. In a letter to the Prime Minister of Norway, Leila wrote, the conflict between the Turkish military and the Kurdish people in 1994 alone cost 12.5 billion dollars. It has become, for the Turkish and the Kurdish people, an economic, political and moral disaster. It is impossible for both sides to win anything by violence and the force of arms. In 1991, Leyla and her friends formed a political party, which for the first time focused on a peaceful and democratic solution to the Kurdish question. Leyla was elected by 84% of her constituents and became the first Kurdish woman ever elected to the Turkish parliament. She brought to the Turkish National Assembly a voice for justice and human rights and a conviction that the war must come to an end. at age 14, Leila married Mehdi Zana, who forever affected her political beliefs. In 1979, he became the mayor of Diyarbakir, the largest Kurdish city in Turkey. After the 1980 military coup, Mehdi was arrested and sentenced to 36 years for separatism, making him an Amnesty International prisoner of conscience. After serving 16 years in prison, Mehdi was released and exiled to Stockholm. 
Azul Leyla Zevcan Dine Azul Pensa en bir hevremane ne mane? Evet, sadece herkes var benim. Kore Minara Deysan Fransa, El Paris'e. Bir zaman ana Dejivan Paris'e berda şu meraka diyafut ki, La Ankara'ya. Hafta cahreket içe serdan ayı bin ayı derdi. Havuzu anal ve ev ve cilif rahmet. Açava ne kızamın? Beni baba. Je viens de sortir de la prison. 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 Elle va bien. Depuis une heure, j'étais j'étais en visite. Since 1991, more than 170 members of Leila's party have disappeared, been tortured to death while in police custody, or assassinated. Amnesty International believes that Hezbollah death squad, supported by Turkish security forces, committed these murders. In an article from the Washington Post, Leila wrote. If Turkish warlords kill the hope of a peaceful solution to the Kurdish problem, then there is a great risk that the Kurds will turn en masse to the camp of violence and Islamic fundamentalism. We've documented killings, disappearances, torture, mistreatment of members and supporters of that party uh, at the hands of Hezbollah, which Leila Zana was uh, a member of parliament for. There's concern that the authorities may even have actually encouraged or, or colluded with Hezbollah. And the death, the disappearance of 160 people associated with the same political party cannot simply be written off as a number of unsolved murders. It points to very alarming concerns of a pattern. It points, it points to the almost inevitable conclusion that someone was systematically targeting those individuals. Leila's political career was short-lived. In March 1994, Leila and her deputy friends were stripped of their parliamentary immunity, arrested and prosecuted as a terrorist cell. Being a Kurd is already a crime in Turkey. In Turkey you can be whatever you want except a Kurd. Until 1991, even the oral use, oral use of the Kurdish language was banned. Until 1991. Leila Zana. My worst crime, in the view of the prosecution, seemed to be a phrase I said in Kurdish on the brotherhood of Kurds and Turks and their coexistence in equality and democracy. When I took the loyalty oath in Parliament, even the color of my clothes seemed to have been a separatist crime. For this action, Leila and her colleagues were convicted to 15 years in prison. Since Leila's imprisonment, a tremendous effort has been launched on her behalf by human rights organizations and the diplomatic community worldwide. In 2001, the European Court for Human Rights found Leila's original trial unlawful. Europe Birliği, Türkiye'deki bölücü ve Türkiye'nin birliğini zayıflatıcı çalışmalarının nihayet mihenk noktası olarak Leyla Zana davası üzerinde durduğunu yakinen bilmekteyim. Birliğinin Avrupa Birliği'nin bunu e, belirli bir stratejiye dayalı olarak yaptığına ben şahsen inanıyorum. Türkiye'de mahkemeler bağımsızdır. Hakimler mevcut meri kanunlara göre karar vermektedir. Bu kanunlarda tam anlamıyla demokratik bir kanun. Amnesty International has declared her a prisoner of conscience. She is a three-time Nobel Peace Prize nominee, and in 1995, she was awarded the Zakharov Prize for Freedom in Thought. Elle représente un des symboles de de la lutte pour le droit de l'autodétermination des peuples. De même que que Mandela, de même que Dalai Lama. She's a figure. She's the figure of Kurdish women who have been forced to live in house and no right, no women rights. And she broke all of these customs and began to increase in political life. 
Since 1991, when Leila first campaigned for the parliament, much has changed for the Kurds. More than one million people gathered for the No Ruse 2002, the Kurdish New Year celebrations in Diyarbakir. Maybe I'm dreaming, but dreams do come true. Today it is possible to find a political solution to the Kurdish problem within the framework of democracy and within the context of existing borders. Beyond borders and divisions imposed by language, religion and culture, we share certain universal values of freedom and human rights. <laughs> 